Okay, and today we're going to be looking at the game of Nefetopt with uh, the rules using corner escape rules where the king has to reach the corner. And I'm going to be discussing the strategies for the, the white side here, the defenders and the king. And there's basically uh, the first... There's a whole lot to cover. Uh, the first thing is um, the king needs to threaten the side quickly. Um, so, you know, moving uh, the pieces in front of him so he can move, uh, you know, to this row here or down to this row here. One of those two. Um, uh, this sort of relates to uh, the rules from playing to the edge where you want to get the king off the throne early. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be the first couple moves of the game, but if you're still, you know, you're, you know, eight or nine moves into the game and he's still on the throne, it's not going to look too good. Because you got to remember that this game, uh, the perimeter is going to be uh, developed very quickly by, by black within uh, eight to 12 moves. And the longer the king waits to, to attack the side, the, the more trouble you're going to be in. Um, and, uh, once, the, once the perimeter is secured, then the, the game, it's virtually impossible to win. So one thing to keep in mind too, is that you don't really have a whole lot to be afraid of in this game when, when the king attacks, um, especially in the beginning, later on in the game, you can start worrying towards the end if you're surrounded and start, he's starting to come up on you. Um, the, the king is very powerful in this game. Um, so you can play very aggressively with the king. Uh, it's a it's a very powerful piece, and um, he's in basically no danger at the beginning of losing. A, a black player's they're they're not going to be able to surround you on four sides at the beginning. It's just it's just not going to happen. <clears throat> um, okay, so the next thing is the defenders need to try and attempt to uh, capture the attackers as much as possible. You know, I don't. There's nothing really to show for that, but just keep that in mind. You want to attack, and you don't really kind of want to worry too much about losing men um, in the process of it. There's not a whole lot you have to think about. You just want to be very, very aggressive. And sacrificing men in most circumstances is, is ideal because um, the, ki the king will often kind of, his own men sort of preventing prevent him sometimes. Sometimes they get in the way of the king. Um, just there is a word about that though is that you can't sacrifice too many men because it'll be fatal for the defenders because it's going to allow easier access for the attackers to surround the king you know at, later um, so you don't want to be you don't want to just lose you know four or five men right away it's probably not the best idea um, the next thing if the attackers do create a create a blockade um, you know, you, you, you got to sort of start attacking it and, and, um, and, and get them out of the way. Um, you can either tr try as hard as you can to get a piece outside whatever barrier and then, um, start moving pieces closer and attack, attack from the outside. It's really good. I like to attack with the king there because anytime the king takes part in captures, it's really benefiting you because um, the king's closer to the corner. You know, always, when you have a choice, always attack, do your attacks with the king involved. Um, so they want you want to try and make holes in it, get rid of pieces so that the king can, can slip through. And um, uh, just kind of do that all, at one corner, really, really have... The fights are really localized in this game at the corners, and it really happens one corner at a time. You don't have fights at two two corners alternating or something like that. You always have a fight down here, and if the king wins, then he wins, and if he loses, then he has to run to another corner and do more fighting. Um, let's see. You can also have the defenders be sort of a part of the of the you know blockade like this. Uh, or let's say it was this one. You know, he's sort of 
this guy, see how he's a part. You can play your pieces where, where Black should play his. And then these are really great to, then at a later time, then, then you move them and, um, and, and start to capture black pe the black pieces. Um, you want to get all the def your defenders to the edge of the board quickly. That's called playing an open game where all your you don't do any you don't make any connected moves where the pieces stay connected. They got to stay open, um, and preferably to uh, one of the three the three squares around that are encircling the board. The three rows that encircle the board. That's where you, you want all your pieces. Um, let's see. And like like I said before, the the king, you got to know when to pursue an attack and when to leave it. Um, basically, you know, if he's outnumbered or just all of his, you know, they, there's really good barriers that are, you know, this is be done for the king. The king has to leave and go go to another corner. The other one, is, of course, is that the one I, I keep using like this one now, you know. You know, if it, the king moved here, and then now it was Black's turn, and he moved there, now the king has to leave. <clears throat> um, and then also, just like in sort of the other videos of escaping to the edge, uh, you always want to keep develop your pieces. Um, uh, where you don't you don't want to move, keep moving the same piece around all the time. You want to you want to develop your pieces. <clears throat> um, you know, if he just moves out here and then, you know, he moves there and then he just keeps moving around, that's not, you're going to underdevelop and Black's going to keep building his perimeter around you while you're just goofing off. <clears throat> um, the other thing that you really keep in mind is that, and this goes for edge uh, top two when, the, when you're playing to the edge rules, and that's, you want to keep in mind that white cannot really plan too far ahead. Um, you kind of really have to you play uh, as a reaction, reactively to what to what uh, the attackers are doing. Uh, you can't plan really too too many moves ahead. Your your goal is to equalize. Like in chess, the goal of Black because Black doesn't move first, he has to, his goal is to equalize in the opening. In this game, uh, White moves second, and um, and White's goal is to equalize. And you kind of have to react to what Black's playing in order to do that. Um, and then just continuing on. Um, so edge rules versus corner rules, they're, they're really two different games entirely. And you want to keep that in mind. So you don't want to use um, you know, too many of the same strategies from, from my video series on playing to the edge. Um, the thing you really got to keep in mind is you got to know that Black, he, and, and, and playing to the corner is Black, is what he's trying to do is, is to stay back uh, and play a perimeter game. He's not he's not going to be coming up to you. Um, so just understand that. And he's keep in mind too that his game plan is a little bit easier than yours because he's already at he's already at the edge of the board and near the corners. So he's he's where he needs to be. You're not you're you're in the worst position possible for your for the goals of the game. <clears throat> um, okay, so let's start talking about where you're really playing to, the king. The king's really kind of not playing to the corners. I went over this kind of in the Brand of, in the Brandu uh, series, um, and he's not really kind of playing to the edge either. It's a weird, what, the really most important thing, if you're going to take away anything from this series, that's, it's really all about these eight squares that, are on uh, that straddle each of the each of the corners. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight. These squares really. Um, that's what the game's all about. Um, the game is one. Anytime the king lands there, he has to land there. It's hard when the it's hard. To, the king almost never gets to the corner from here from from this this row here. See, there's so many men on it. Plus, he gets trapped real easily here. You'll find, and if you play by the North America rules, uh, that the manufacturer's rules of this game, that's a loss. So, I don't really like for the king to go down there. Uh, and this is always a better better 
row to be on. This it's the second to last outer row. It's the second to last outer row because that's where you're going to hit these 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 squares. You always get to them from an angle too. Like you don't you don't get to this square from here. You don't get to that square obviously. You get to it from here. You get to this square from here. From here. You get this square not from here. You get to this square from here. Okay. And it's the same all the way around the board. So you really want to keep that in mind. Um, that that's a really important row. Um, the king. So the king always wins when he lands here. Okay. So let's see. Let's see. Okay. So always get there at an angle. The next thing is um, well, there's. I wanted to go over different ways of getting to those corners, um, to these corner squares. Uh, you can either get there by um, this file being open, which is great. That's the easiest way to get there, or one of one of the easiest ways. So anytime you see the second to last row around the board being completely open and the king can get there, that's a win. It's uh, the game's over because Black cannot defend both both sides. He'll if he plays here. Then here and the game's over. If he plays here, then the king plays here and the game's over. Because remember, uh, um, black can't play there on the corners. Only white can. So uh, that's one way of getting there. Another way is um, when the king is already on. When the king's already on that second to last row, and. Um, uh, a piece is captured, you know, another piece, ca one of his other pieces captures, uh, his other piece is on the row behind him. So he's on the second to last row, another piece is behind him on the third, and it's his move, and he's got a clear shot at a guy that's that's blocking there. Now, that's another way to get there. Um, another way to get there, which is rather obvious, but would be really stupid, is if once again, you're on the good road to be on the second to last row there, and um, he moves away, you know, obviously, for some stupid reason. Um, and then, I mean, there's other ways. Uh, there, there could be a piece screening, you know, you could have a piece that's, you know, over here, and, um, you know, he's, he, you know, Black's move or something. There's nobody here, and he, a piece, a guy is acting as a screen, basically is what I'm what I'm saying. And so he can get there from that. So there's several ways to get to these to get to these uh, squares here. Um, let's see. That's probably a good stopping point. I still have probably will probably make another couple videos. Um, I still probably got another two videos to make here about about white strategies. So you want to watch for those. And so that's the end of part one for the white strategy.